Hello, it's so nice to be with you. Today, we will continue our topic of passive voice. It is very important. You know, it is uh, three times more used than in Spanish. But before we get into the core of our topic, let us remember a little bit about passive voice. Remember that the passive is used to describe situations in which the subject is acted upon. In other words, receives the action of the verb. Look at this sentence. The police interrogated the suspect. What do you have at the beginning? You have the subject. And then you have the verb, interrogated. And then you have the direct object. Remember that in this sentence, in the active voice, the subject is the doer. And then you have the action described by the verb. And then you have the direct object, which receives the action. Okay, let us continue with our review. Okay, but let me say it again. If uh, the subject is acted upon, or in other words, if the subject receives uh, the action of the verb, what do we have? We have the passive, okay? Here you have uh, two sentences. This one is active. Why? Let us analyze it. The police did something. What was it? Interrogated. Who was interrogated? The suspect. Okay. Subject. Active because uh, he did something. He did this. And then something or somebody receives the action. The suspect was interrogated. Okay. Now the action comes uh, from here. And then it is the, the action described here, and here you have the receiver. If you want to change from active to passive, you remember what to do. You have the direct object here, and then you put it at the beginning, and this is the new subject. So in the, in the active sentence, you're talking about the police. In the passive sentence, you're talking about the suspect. Okay, in this case, the suspect is more important to you, so you put it at the beginning. But the suspect didn't do anything. No, the suspect was interrogated. By whom? By the police. Okay, so here you have the agent. You have the doer. Here you have the verb in the past participle. But you also know that to make the passive, you need a form of the verb B. This is a simple past tense, and then you use the simple past tense of the verb be. If you had here future, for example, will interrogate, then you will have here the future of the verb be, and then you would have will be interrogated. Okay. You already know the process. Here you have the principal verb. In the past tense, it can be in the present, in the progressive, uh, in the present perfect. But anyway, the principal verb is all the time in uh, the past participle if you're having the passive. Now, let us continue with our, with our lesson. The passive is also used to describe situations or states. This, this use is called the stative passive. Okay. This is another use of the passive. So pay attention to this. El Salvador is composed of 14 departments. In this case, you are describing El Salvador. And you're saying that it has uh, 14 departments. You use uh, the passive to describe, but who did it? Who divided El Salvador into 14 departments? Okay, we don't know, and it is not important. And then uh, when you just want to describe uh, something, you use the stative passive. It means uh, that in most cases, you don't have the agent at the end. And listen to this. 
most stative passives do not have a corresponding active sentence. Uh, and most do not contain a by phrase. Okay? Remember that sometimes uh, we, we like to play. We have active and then we make it passive and then we have passive and make it active and so on. When you have a steady passive, okay, you don't have a, a corresponding active sentence, okay? We're talking about most stative passives. And uh, therefore, generally, you don't have a by phrase, okay? Now, let us remember that. Now, let us see something else. A few stative passives do have a corresponding active sentence. How many? A few, okay? Now, the majority, remember, that do not have a corresponding active sentence. Okay, the, the ones, uh, the few that include passives are formed with connect and surround. So when you have the verb connect and the verb surround, then sometimes uh, you have uh, the corresponding active voice. Let us uh, look at one example. England and France are connected by the channel. Active or passive? Uh, that is easy. Yes, it is passive. Why? Because we have the verb be and the past participle, and then we have here the agent. Okay? England and France are not doing anything, so it is not active. The action fall upon, falls upon the subject. Now, let us see the corresponding active voice. The channel connects England and France, okay? You have a passive and you have active. What kind of passive is it? It is stative passive, and it has a corresponding active voice. Why? Because you're using the verb connect, and the same thing happens when you have the verb surround, okay? Those are verbs that we have to remember. Now, we use the steady passive to describe situations or states. In steady passive sentences, there is normally no action taking place. Remember that we use it to describe situations or states. And if you have a situation, there is no action taking place. If you have a state, there is no action taking place. So we use the passive, the stative passive, when there is no action taking place. Now, look at this. Our two families are related. Yes, we have the same, somewhere we have the same ancestors, okay? The two families are related. In this case, you are just describing a situation or a state. There is no action here. Stative passive constructions are often followed by a prepositional phrase. Okay, not an agent. It is a prepositional phrase. Look at this. A peninsula is surrounded by water on three sides. Okay, here you have the prepositional phrase on three sides, and here you have another prepositional phrase, by water. A peninsula is surrounded by water. Okay? So what do we have to remember about this? That a stative passive constructions, well, they are followed by a prepositional phrase. In this case, this prepositional phrase is the agent, and anyway, here you have another prepositional phrase. Now, let us uh, see some of our famous charts. The passive to describe situations. Passive sentences. Here you have uh, the subject, and then you have the verb be and the past participle. Why do you have be and past participle? Because we are talking about passive sentences. Okay? We have the be uh, plus past participle, and uh, we have a prepositional phrase. You see that it is common to have a prepositional phrase after a steady passive, 
And in the examples here, there is no agent, okay? Remember that in the majority of cases, when you have a stative passive, you do not have agent and there is no a corresponding active sentence, okay? You just have the passive sentence. Let us read it here. Let us see here the examples that we have. The people are related to each other. The country is composed of two regions. The island is connected to the mainland. The capital was located in the south. Who located the capital in the south? Who knows? Okay, so no agent and no active sentence. Remember that when you have this symbol, it means that these forms do not occur, okay? No active sentence, no agent. Question, when do you use the stative sentence? When you describe situations or states. Now, look at this. Here we have active sentences, subject, verb, and then we have a that clause. Some anthropologists say that the people came from the East. This is a clause. Yes, we have seen that. Here you have the subject and you have the verb. The people came from the East. And uh, this... Um, this clause begins with that. It can be omitted. That is why it is between parentheses. Some anthropologists say what? Ah, this is the object, okay? The object of the sentence. So this is a noun clause. Okay, anyway, let us see the other example. Some anthropologists think that the people came from the East. Some anthropologists believe that the people came from the East. Some anthropologists allege that the people came from the East. What do we have here? We have active sentences. The subject does something, say, think, believe, or allege. In this case, the subject is plural. Okay, now let us see the, the, the counterpart passive sentences. And here we have a two phrase. The people are said to have come from the East. The people are thought to have come from the East. Okay? Remember that since you have here a stative uh, passive, it is possible to omit the agent. You s mention it or not. Let us mention it using believed and alleged. The People are believed by some anthropologists to have come from the East. Okay? What is something that we have to remember about this? If you're going to mention the agent, it is after the verb. And if you're going to use a to phrase, then it is at the end. Okay? Remember, subject, be plus past participle, by plus agent, if you decide to use it. And then at the end, you have the to phrase, okay? To and the verb phrase, to have come from the East. Okay, we have said it a little bit more about passive sentences. I, I hope that you like the topic. I hope you find it useful. And I also hope that you use it, okay, whenever you speak. Remember that by applying this, you show that you know more English. You are becoming more proficient in English. That would be all for today. I hope you understand better the passive voice. Remember, watch this video as many times as you wish. In case of doubt, ask your classmates or your tutor. Bye.